and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about five things I think senior photographers should stop doing as we move into the year of 2024. And some of them are gonna be a little controversial. So if that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and keep watching. My channel. My name is Hope Taylor and I have been a senior portrait photographer for over a decade and this YouTube channel is where I share bi-weekly education for senior photographers and I'm really excited about today's video because I think it's gonna be a little spicy, a little fun, a little controversial, but I am going to be sharing five things that I think photographers should stop doing as we go into 2024. Uh, these are things that I have stopped doing in my own senior photography business and some of them are trends that I've seen some of them are related to business, some related to marketing, some related to editing, client experience, just things that I think Gen Z is moving away from and things they aren't quite as attracted to in terms of a senior photographer as maybe they used to be. Uh, I'm hoping that some of them are freeing to you because some of them are things that you can take off your plate that I don't think are necessary in the world of senior photography anymore. And then some might be controversial and that's okay. These are really just opinion based. These are also based on my market uh, and what works for me and my business. So just know this is lighthearted. Uh, this is not saying you are doing anything wrong in your business. It's mostly just decisions I'm making in my business as we move into the new year. Before we dive in, I do have a free gift for you at the link down in the description. If you are a senior photographer that is also a visual learner and you want to watch me photograph an entire senior session from start to finish and basically be like my virtual shadow or my virtual second shooter to see me work with a real client in real life situations situations, I have a free link for you below where you can sign up to watch me photograph one client inside of my Senior Scoop membership. And I have specifically chosen Brooks Charleston Senior Session as the shoot you get to watch because it is jam packed. It's two parts plus an editing demonstration. And you get to see me work with the iconic pink figgy car, so many of the iconic downtown Charleston locations, and just navigate a ton of different lighting and a ton of different locations and outfits all in real time. So if that sounds like it would be helpful to you and you want to see my camera settings, my lighting, my locations, all my thought processes, you can do that 100% for free just to say thanks for tuning in by grabbing it at the link in the description. With that said, let's go ahead and dive in. I am talking about five things that you can stop doing and I think you should stop doing when it comes to senior portrait photography in 2024. The first thing that I believe senior portrait photographers and really any photographer should stop doing is focusing only on your professional images in your marketing. Let me tell you what I mean by that. I see so many photographers who on social media, specifically talking about Instagram and Facebook and Pinterest, the only things that they are sharing are their final images or their professional work. Their entire feed is pictures of beautiful clients and they can be beautiful pictures, right? But they are not incorporating anything about their client experience, about themselves as the photographer, about their lives outside of their professional work. They are not sharing reels or video content. They are only posting static images of their clients on their feeds and their, in their marketing. And let me tell you why I think that is so important to change and why I don't think that it's going to work anymore as we move into 2024. We all know that the world of social media is incredibly important when it comes to marketing, specifically to seniors, right? Because that's where seniors are hanging out. They're on Instagram, they're on TikTok. That's where they're finding their photographer. So if the only thing that you're posting is your final images, you're limiting their ability to find you because there's so many other ways for people to be finding you on social media right now through short form content, through your stories, through TikTok, there's so many different avenues that you should be utilizing. But even bigger than that, even bigger than incorporating multiple types of media, like short form video, you are limiting your customer's ability to connect with you if you are only highlighting your customers and never highlighting yourself in the way that you share online. 
I would say almost 100% of my senior clients choose to work with me because they love my work, but also because they feel connected to me. Because I share about my life, I share about my wedding, I share about my house, I share about my hobbies outside of the photography world. I show my face on social media. I have branding photos that I use. I talk to my Instagram stories. Some of you just totally tuned me out when I said that because you hate doing that. But I really give my customers the opportunity to connect with me. And if you are not already doing this in your small business, if you are not already talking about yourself and giving your audience the opportunity to connect with you on a personal level, then you are going into 2024 at a major disadvantage. Because even one of my personal big pet peeves is if I find a business or a photographer or an artist that I love on social media and I can't find a single photo of them or the person that's running the Instagram account, I won't follow them because I don't want to follow another corporation, right? I want to follow a person, a small business. And if you aren't letting people connect to you as the heartbeat behind the business or the photographer behind the work, you're really setting yourself at a disadvantage. So the first thing that you should start doing in 2024, my more tangible challenge to you is to try to work in a photo or a video or a behind the scenes reel even of you photographing a session at least once a week on social media. Start opening up the opportunity for your clients to get to know you and understand you and connect with you as a part of your marketing strategy. The second thing that I believe senior photographers should stop doing in 2024 is heavily, heavily photoshopping their images or what I call glamour edits for their images. So hear me out on this one. This is something that I have not been doing in my business for probably eight years now. I've been a senior photographer for almost 11 years. And for the last eight, I have stopped over editing my senior portraits. Let me explain a little bit more about what I mean by over editing your senior portraits. I don't go to the extent of smoothing every single piece of skin on my seniors, whitening their teeth, brightening their eyes, slimming them, uh, adding weight or removing weight. I don't do any of those things in my senior portraits. What I do is I remove blemishes, I remove background distractions, I'll remove under eye bags, um, I'll soften harsh shadows on their face, I will remove a stain from their clothing. So I do all of those things, but I am not retouching every single image to be magazine cover quality or to in any way alter the way that my seniors look. And not only do I think that that has changed my business because it has saved me hours and hours and hours of time editing, but I also believe that Gen Z as a generation, today's senior clients, they do not want to be altered to not look like themselves. They don't want their images to reflect like a supermodel that's on the cover of a magazine. They want to feel like themselves. They want to feel like a beautiful elevated version of themselves, of course, but they want to look at the images and feel like themselves. They want to embrace their natural beauty and feel like them. And I think that really heavily kind of glam, I call them glamour edits, uh, like taking the time to whiten every tooth and the white of every eye and, um, you know, remove weight or alter the shape of someone's face. That is what I refer to as a glamour edit. And those were really trendy in the senior photography world a few years ago. It was something that a lot of senior photographers were doing. We're creating these just like epic glamour images that looked like the cover of Vogue magazine. I don't think that's something that seniors want or are looking for anymore. And my hope is that that's freeing to some of you, those of you that are doing these types of editing and like heavy photoshopping on your photos. My hope is that it's freeing to you of like, oh, I don't have to spend hours and hours in Photoshop if I don't want to, because you don't. An alternative to this or a hybrid of this is maybe you do a light edit like I do on every single image that you deliver. And if your clients want five or 10 images that are perfected before they order them on on a canvas or an album, maybe you offer that as an additional purchase or an additional option. But to edit every single image that you deliver by hours and hours and hours of glamour editing, it's just not necessary. And I would go as far as to say it's not what seniors want anymore. I edit a full senior gallery from the moment I upload the images, call them, edit all of them in Lightroom and Photoshop them. It takes me about two hours to edit a whole gallery. So I'm turning around senior galleries in a week or less. Imagine the excitement and surprise when my clients get their whole gallery back in a week and they look amazing, they feel amazing. I've touched 
every single image and perfected every single image, but not to a glamour magazine cover level because I don't think that's what seniors are looking for in today's day and age. So second thing I think you can stop doing in 2024 is glamorizing and over editing every single one of your senior images to perfection. Along that same line, the third thing that I think photographers need to stop doing is making excuses for really, really long turnaround times. And I probably just ruffled some feathers with that one. I told you that some of this was going to be spicy. Some of it was going to be controversial. But in my opinion, when it comes to portrait galleries, weddings are a totally different conversation. That's not what we're talking about. When we're talking about a senior portrait gallery of 100 images or less, maybe 150 images or less, I don't believe that there's any reason that that should take you eight to 12 weeks to deliver, even if you're shooting a very high volume. And I don't outsource my editing for my senior work. I outsource my editing for my weddings. I do not outsource my senior work, which means I am editing every single one of those images myself. I'm photoshopping them myself, I'm calling, I'm editing all of it, blogging, it's all done by me. And I'm doing that within a week. Here's the challenge that I want to, to give you or the thing I wanna give you to think about. A lot of photographers have long turnaround times like that, six, eight, 12, 14 weeks, because they have a backlog of edits to be doing, right? They have to call and edit their shoots from six weeks ago. So that's why your shoot isn't getting done um, or this current shoot isn't getting done until six or eight weeks from today. However, what I have learned is that if I can just force myself to sit down and call and edit sneak peeks within 24 hours of my session, yes, that is a huge challenge and a big thing to sign up for. If you are used to coming home from a shoot and not even touching those images for four to six weeks because of your back log, the idea of 24 hour sneak peeks is terrifying. Maybe you're a little more gentle with yourself. Maybe it's 48 hours, maybe it's five days. But what I do is I come home from a shoot and the next day I call the entire session. So that part's done. And then I edit 10 to 12 sneak peeks that I share with my client within that 24 hour window. And I share on social media. It serves so many beneficial purposes to my business, right? My client's blown away. My social media is always active and relevant with new content, which is incredible from a marketing perspective. And it's setting me up for success with my editing workflow because now all I have to do is take those 10 to 12 sneak peeks that I've edited, sync the images in the entire catalog with those edits just by syncing up the different lighting and locations, and then throw a quick Photoshop edit on each of them and I'm done. So quick turnaround times has actually started to be something that I promise my clients in their packages. I promise them two to three weeks so that they're still surprised by a quick one week turnaround and I have a little bit of wiggle room if anything were to happen, but I'm allowing myself to lean into that as a part part of the value that I offer as a photographer. You don't have to wait 12 weeks for your gallery. You can start sharing your senior Sunday images within two weeks of your session. The fourth thing that I think senior photographers should stop doing in 2024 is including hair and makeup in your senior photography packages. I have never done this in my business and I want to tell you why. One is that I have found logistically, it is incredibly difficult for me to be the one that is trying to navigate scheduling with a client and a hair and makeup team, especially if rescheduling for any reason becomes necessary. If there is a rainstorm, a family emergency, um, the senior needs to reschedule. Me being the middleman between the senior and a hair and makeup artist, logistical nightmare. It just creates a whole added sense of stress and a whole additional layer of frustration for everybody involved if I'm the middleman having to communicate between these two people, right? But bigger than that, the second and most important reason I don't include hair and makeup that is relevant to 2024 is that I have found that Gen Z, which is really unfair, they completely skip the awkward phase of not knowing how to do their hair and makeup. I don't know if anybody else looks at this and thinks it's bananas. When I was in high school, I wore blue eyeshadow. I had braces and gaps in my teeth and I no sooner knew how to do my own hair and makeup than anything. Like I was a mess, right? So nowadays, I have found that because of TikTok and social media and YouTube and all of this short form video that seniors are consuming all the time, they are stellar at their own hair and makeup. But even more than that, they really like how they do their own hair and makeup. So what I do instead is I provide my clients with a senior style guide, which is a massive document that helps them to prep for their session with everything they need to know, what to wear, locations, hair and makeup, all of it. And I provide recommendations of local hair and makeup artists that I love. Those hair and makeup artists know that they're in my style guide so that they're gonna get references and referrals from my business pretty frequently, but I leave it completely up to the client. It's not required. 
required. It's not included. I'm not the logistical middleman and they don't feel like they have to. I provide tips on how to do your own hair and makeup so that it's camera ready because there's some things that you change, right? Maybe a brighter lip, a little bit heavier of an eyelash, those types of things, but it's not required. It doesn't feel like something that they have to do. And I would say only about 10 to 20% of my customers actually do hair and makeup, not because it's not in the budget, but because they don't like it. They like how they do their own hair and makeup. So if you are one of those photographers that's like in that logistical frustration of feeling like you have to require hair and makeup or provide it, so you're being the middleman or you're trying to find a hair and makeup artist and you can't find one and it's just a nightmare, you don't have to. And I would actually say it's a service to your clients to provide them with recommendations, but leave it up to them. Leave that ball in their court so that they can decide if they would prefer hair and makeup or not. Lastly, number five, the fifth thing I think senior photographers should cut in 2024, which is going to be the most controversial one, and I know it, is that I think photographers should stop requiring really hefty purchase minimums from their final galleries. This one is going to be very opinion based. I have lots of videos on my channel about why I provide digitals in my gallery and why I believe photographers should even just offer the opportunity to purchase digitals as an option. The thing that I'm saying is that I actually think you are doing yourself a disservice from a marketing perspective if you make it impossible for your clients to get access to their digital files. Because one of the number one ways that I have grown my business over the last 10 years is through word of mouth marketing on social media. My clients, their moms, the hair and makeup artists I've worked with, the boutiques where they buy their clothes, they all get digital images from me after a session. And they are all posting those digital images and crediting me and tagging me on social media. And it helps to get the ball rolling with momentum at the beginning of a business, but also maintain the legitimacy and the bookings throughout the entire last 10 or 11 years of my business. And if only one in every 10 of my clients was getting access to digital files because it wasn't in their budget unless they had thousands of dollars to spend on prints and products. That's doing them a disservice, but it's also doing me a disservice because now they don't really have anything to post on social media to talk about their experience with me or their images that they loved. They would have to go take a picture of the framed print or the canvas or the album and post that on social media to get the word of mouth marketing rolling. I don't want to have to make it that hard on them. I want them to talk about me and share about me and post about me and send their friends to me. And I want to make that process as easy as possible. I hope you found this video interesting. I had a lot of fun putting it together because I really think there are lots of misconceptions and pressures that we put on ourselves in the senior photography world that maybe we can relieve a little bit, right? And like remove a little bit of stress. And there's also some things that I've been a senior photographer for 11 years. So I've seen some trends come and go and some things specifically about Gen Z and the current day and age of seniors that I just find really, really interesting about what they like and what they don't like and, and how they're attracted to marketing differently than seniors were eight years ago. So I just hope this video got your wheels turning and was insightful to you. And if you're a photographer that wants to learn more about the world of senior portraits, especially if you are a visual learner, um, I just wanted to remind you, there's a link in the description to a free gift down below where you can watch an entire uncut senior session of mine from start to finish, see my camera settings, my unedited images versus my final images, and hear my thought process on every decision I'm making from lighting to location to client interaction to outfit to posing to wardrobe, just everything. So the link is in the description. That's just my thank you for being here. Uh, that content's actually only available to my paid senior scoop members outside of it just being a gift to you here on YouTube. So grab that link in the description. I share bi-weekly education for senior photographers every week and I'd be so grateful to have you subscribe. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you in the new year. Bye.